What is going on everyone? Welcome to Philly Insider. I'm Hunter Doyle. We've got a free agent video today. I didn't expect to be doing these at this point in the offseason, especially if you had told me the Phillies would have gotten Gregory Soto, Craig Kimbrell, Matt Strom, Tywin Walker, and Trey Turner. I'd be like, oh, offseason's finished. But we are still looking to maybe make one more move. I'm not sure if that's going to happen for sure, but I, we are talking about Adam Duvall today, as you can see by the title. And this has been mentioned by a lot of fans. There's not really any sources on this yet, but um, McCutcheon is now off the market. He went back to Pittsburgh. And there's a number of teams like the Blue Jays, I think, are looking for a fourth outfielder. I think the Red Sox are still looking for someone, maybe thinking about moving Kike Hernandez into the infield if they find a defensive option out for center. Um, not sure what, you know, maybe Duvall is someone who of interest there. And then the Mets are also kind of looking at guys like Tommy Pham, Duvall, some other names as well. But we're going to be starting off with Duvall. And then, yeah, I'll, I guess I'll make a couple other videos up until the Phillies sign someone, or if they don't, or if these guys, until these guys all are off the market. So starting off with Duvall, obviously he had a season ending injury last year, which really sucked, um, especially at age 34. He wasn't having his best season up until the injury. He had a torn tendon sheath, I believe, in his left wrist, so not, not a good injury to have. I think it happened when he was trying to rob a home run or jumped into the wall, which also not a fun way to have it happen. I didn't actually, I didn't see the play, but um, I heard about it, did not sound pretty. But point being, he's a guy who I, I still think can contribute in a number of fast, but in a number of ways, I mean, obviously the defensive ability is huge. He can play center, he can play the corner outfield positions. And look, I, I think having a backup center fielder for a guy like Brandon Marsh, who, you know, maybe might need a platoon from time to time. Obviously Brandon Marsh is a pretty good defensive option, but you know, he might need a platoon. Um, I'm not sure if he's ready for the next step, to where he can play against lefties every day. We'll find out. I mean, maybe he will be. I, I hope so, and I think he will reach that point down the road. But, you know, a guy like Duvall, who has hit well against lefties over the past few years, it might make sense. Just talking about more, more a little bit about Duvall's defense. Um, 78th percentile in arm strength last year. So 89.1 miles per hour was his average, and then 97.4 miles per hour was his max throw. Um, he had 12 outfield assists in 2021 three in 2022 so the, the guy definitely has an arm he can gun it he, he can obviously he has an accurate arm too he can throw guys out on the base paths that hasn't changed much and then you know you, you kind of look at his outfielder jump too and just how quickly he's able to track balls 74th percentile in outfielder jump 26th in outs above average and that consider that he only had five outs above average because he played an 86 game only five outs above average i say you know like that's nothing but it's it's still really really good especially you consider he only played 86 games that number definitely would have been higher if not for hit the injury 17th and success rate added as well at three percent that probably would have been much higher too um so obviously the guy still got it defensively i think it's nice you, you don't really know in terms of backup deep you know backup center fielders you probably have guthrie who can play pretty well right but he also plays a number of other positions too you might want to move him around a little bit if he does make the roster you're also not sure if he's going to earn a roster spot in spring training and you've got Jake Cave, who probably is more of a corner outfielder. He can play center field, but I, I like Duvall there for his center field ability. So, you know, he gives you an option as a, a backup defensive center fielder and also a guy who can, you know, allow Shorburn and Castellanos to DH a little bit early in the year. And you get a better defensive option out there while Bryce is out. You get a little bit of a boost while Bryce is out of the lineup. And, you know, when Bryce comes back, I think you have a guy who can mix in and, like I said, platoon with Marsh, but also maybe give a couple guys, you know, guys in the corners a day off here and there, right? And I think that's huge. As far as his hitting goes, he's more of a pull hitter. Like I said, he hit pretty well versus lefties last year, 844 OPS. Oddly enough, that was not the case in 2021 for him, but over the course of his career, he's had a pretty good track record in terms of hitting against lefties. And when the Braves initially acquired him, I believe in 2018 from the Reds, that was a big thing they were, they were looking at. So again, Marsh, I mentioned him a number of times, but I, I'm not trying to bash Marsh. I, I really do hope Marsh can take that next step. And if you think he's ready for it, maybe you don't go after a guy like uh, Adam Duvall. But um, just wanted to mention that because I do think it's, you know, with Matt Beerling gone, it's something you got to consider if that's something you still want to have in the, in the lineup, obviously. But um, he's not going to hit for average. That much is certain. We know what type of player Adam Duvall is. Um, he's going to fill that power role though, right? I mean, th this is something that I think it could definitely be needed in Bryce's absence. And Again, does strike out a lot. You're going to expect that from hitters like Duvall in today's game. He's going to hit for power, and he's going to strike out a good bit. And, you know, unfortunately for Duvall, he's not like some of those other guys who, while they hit for power and strike out a lot, a lot of the really good ones walk, right, and they still get on base. Duvall, not so much, at least last year, that wasn't the case. So that's something I don't love. But... Like I said, he hits the ball hard, he hits the ball far, and I think that's really important. When he makes contact, he's gonna elevate it. And yeah, I mean, 
I, I still think that's something that is much needed in plenty of lineups, especially for a Phillies team looking for a fourth outfielder to fill, fill a spot while Bryce Harper is out of the lineup, like I said. Um, and he could be used as a pinch hitter later in the year, right? Like, I know last year wasn't his best year offensively. Um, he was a sub-700 OPS player, which isn't usual for him. And maybe he does start to decline as, you know, he gets later in his career. And I think the wrist is something to be concerned about. There's a number of different wrist injuries that can be associated with, uh, I you know, some struggles at the plate. So, I, you know, I don't know exactly what this specific wrist injury entails in terms of that, and maybe he makes a full recovery, but I do think it's something to consider. I'm sure all those MLB front offices are doing their due diligence, and he got the surgery, so I'm hoping he'll be okay. But at that age, it is a concern, and ability to drive the baseball could be a concern. But I, I do believe that if he's, all, if he's all good in the injury department, he's a guy who can return to like a 770 OPS level probably hit 20 home runs or so, hit some, you know, hit some balls into the gaps for doubles as well. Um, interesting, last year, pitchers threw more sliders to him in 2022. He had a similar whiff rate and a similar K rate, but a much lower average, 230 in 2021 against sliders, which, you know, for his power, that's very passable. And then slugging, or no, sorry, in 2021, or 2022, it was 183 was his average against the slider. Slugging went down from 492 to 333 in that span. So, you know, that, not a great sign. Maybe pitchers are starting to catch on to some sort of tendency with him. And, you know, obviously we saw Castellano struggle with the slider. You don't want to see those two guys hit back to back and struggle to hit sliders all year long, right? But I do think Castellanos is going to bounce back next year. Just a little side note. Um, he destroyed curveballs in 2021 as well. Obviously didn't get as many of them in 2022. Pitchers figured out, look, we're not going to try to hang a curveball versus this, or try to throw a curveball versus this guy and risk hanging it, right? So another thing I think he needs to be better for just change-ups. You know, obviously that is a tough in the MLB because it looks like a fastball, you know, 90% 90 of the way to home plate and then bang, in the snap of a finger, you know, you're like, oh crap, this is change up and I just swung right over it, right? And that's something with a power hitter like Duvall, they're gonna throw plenty of them to him and try to get him pulled, right? But he still took advantage of fastballs last year, sinker, cutter, four seam, whatever type of fastball it was. He, he sees it pretty well. Um, he makes pitchers pay for big mistakes in the heart of the plate, right? And he can change the game with that one swing. So. I do have concerns about him versus the, the slider and, you know, the changeup, but I still think, you know, when you look at his years past, he has had success hitting those pitches from time to time. So I I, I feel okay about him in that regard. And, and, you know, look, some fun stats here, 33 career games versus the, or not versus the Phillies, but in Citizens Bank Park, 29 starts. He has hit 339 with 11 home runs, 30 RBIs, so over an RBI per start, just under an RBI per game in Citizens Bank Park, with seven doubles, 20 runs scored, and a 1.061 OPS. Pretty good numbers in Citizens Bank. So, I mean, you tell me if you'd like having that short fence in left field. Um, I know he won't have the right field fence as much as he's more of a pull hitter. He might hit a couple over the right field fence, but, you know, I, I you know, left field fence isn't exactly that, that far out either. So, but I think a left-handed bat might make sense for the Phillies too. Like, you know, especially in Harper's absence, you could use something like that in the, in the middle of the order. But I'm not sure you're going to find that right now. Like maybe, maybe you get a guy like Peralta, David Peralta, who could hit, you know, maybe towards the bottom of the order. Um, but you're not going to find too many power hitting lefties that are going to replace Bryce's production. And I think it limits your options when you just look for a lefty for that fourth outfield slash, you know, third outfield guy with Bryce out, right? Um, I'm not opposed to, you know, getting a lefty bat, but I also think Duval is a, a really good option, possibly the best option on the market if you're willing to go over that second threshold, which it sounds like the Phillies are. Um, and again, I think valid concerns about the rest. Valid concerns about maybe him not transitioning to a bench role later in the season as well, because he's he might, maybe he'll look for more of a starting spot on the market, like the Red Sox might offer him that. Um, I think the Mets, I'm not sure, I'm not exactly sure if he would start there or not, but you know, point being, the Phillies, it would really only be for half a season. And maybe he wants to go win a ring with us, but he did win a ring in 2021. So I'm not sure, really sure what he's looking for in free agency. But, you know, if he wants to come to Philadelphia, I, I mean, I think if he's okay with the role he's going to have here, I think it makes a ton of sense. He's not going to cost a fortune. He's probably going to cost, what, seven to eight million, I think is the projected mark. Maybe a little bit more um, just because of the nature of the market. But, you know, Kutch got paid around five million. I'd expect Duvall to get a little bit north of that, obviously. But, don't expect the 2021 Adam Duvall if he comes here, right? No matter where he is, honestly. Like, you're hoping for a little bit better than the 2022 player, obviously. 
even at age 34, I still think he could be a key part of this team. And yeah, look, I'm all for it if, if he wants to come here. I think he, this is the cherry on top of what's been an awesome offseason if he comes here, but I don't think he's the only option out there. I think there's a number of other guys who, you know, Duvall, Duvall I think is going to be hard to get, right? I think there's other teams who are going to be competing for him who could probably give him a little bit better, a better deal and probably a little more playing time too. Um, but, you know, I think there's other guys we could get who are out there who I'd be like, yeah, that, that's a good move to get that fourth outfielder and have someone while Bryce is out, right? I don't think it has to be Adam Duvall. But I do think if we end up getting him, I think that's probably a really good scenario. You know, I like I like that idea. Um, and it was something I was opposed to about a, a week or two ago, but coming to the, you know, a realization that we probably will go over the second threshold anyway. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that if they want to go do that. And, um yeah, I, I didn't really consider that they were going to go over the second threshold. So I was kind of working at a, a much smaller budget when I was looking for players. But now that I know that they're probably going to go over it, yeah, I'm, I'm cool with Adam Duvall coming into Philadelphia. So um, I think it's not very likely, but, you know, I, I don't think it's like the most unrealistic thing in the world. I just think there's other teams you could probably offer him a better, better, you know, better playing time, better contract possibly. But, you know, again, if he, if he does want to help us here, I think that would be a huge help. So let me know what you guys think about potentially picking up Adam Duvall. Um, not editing this video, I'm just gonna give my thoughts on it. You know, I, I don't really have a lot of time to edit right now. Things are busy, but um, yeah, so you guys can enjoy just seeing me for the whole time on this video. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. God bless y'all. Ring the bell, go Phils. And yeah, we'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.